Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you, dear viewers. Welcome to tonight's lecture, organized by the UK Talim Department. As per our tradition, we will start the program with the recitation of the Holy Quran. Can I request Nasir Ahmed? Awusu Kanoda Sahib to deliver the Talabat and its English translation, please. Assalamu alaikum. Auzu billahi mina shaitani rajim. Bismillahi الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون ويقتلون وعدا عليه حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن ومن أوفى بعهده من الله فاستبشروا ببيعكم الذي بايعتم به وذلك هو الفوز العظيم التائبون العابدون الحامدون السائقون الراكئون نسائهون والراكئون الساجدون الآمرون بالمعروف والناخون عن المنكر والحافظون لخدود الله وبشر المؤمنين The verses which I have just recited to you is from chapter Nine at Toba, verses 111 and 112. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan, the accursed, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. Surely, Allah has purchased of the believers their persons and their property and return for the garden they shall have. They fight in the cause of Allah and they slay and are slain, a promise that he has made incumbent on himself in the Torah and the Gospel and the Quran. And who is more faithful to his promise than Allah? Rejoice then in your bargain which you have made with him and that it is which is the supreme triumph. They are the ones who turn to God in repentance, who worship him, who praise him, who go about in the land serving him, who bow down to God, who prostrate themselves in prayer, who enjoin good and forbid evil, and who watch the limits set by Allah and give glad tidings to those who believe. Jazakumullah.
Jazakallah. Uh, Tonight, we have the pleasure of being joined by Ahmed Ousu Konado Sahib. He's the serving as a Deputy President Pan African Ahmadiyya Muslim Association. More importantly, he is the Muslim um, TV Ahmadiyya MTA, African um, Country Manager for Ghana, Nigeria, and also a spokesperson for Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, Scotland. As always, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions. These will be put to our guests on your behalf. Please type your questions to the live chat and kindly ensure they are relevant to tonight's lecture. It gives me a great pleasure to hand over to MSI to deliver the tonight's lecture. Assalamu alaikum. Sakin, can you hear me? Yes, I do. Ashhadullah ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin Ia kana budu wa ia kana stain. Ehdina sirat al mustaqim. Sirat al lazina an amta alayhim. Wairin madu di alayhim walakulin. Amin. First of all, I would want to thank the UK Talim Department uh, for giving my humble self uh, the chance to say some few words. Uh, those of you who probably uh, are very close to me would know that uh, I'm actually recovering from COVID. So just bear with me in case I'm not able to do justice to the, the very important topic that we have at hand. Yes, I know a lot has been said about our brother our beloved brother, Said Talib Ahmed Shahid. Our beloved Huzu did a full kutuba on him. We've seen his documentary and we've seen quite a lot about him. And people would be probably be asking, so what is the need? Why? Why again? What is uh, Ahmed also doing here? What is he also going to say? The topic for tonight is the legacy of Said Tali Ahmed Shahid. Yes, a lot has been said, and I'm just here to sort of, and I believe uh, in, in, in the African uh, language, we have an adage or a proverb that says that uh, too much meat or fish in a soup do not spoil anything. As believers, we remind ourselves and yes, I'm here only because we know our beloved Huzur, the one whom Allah has chosen to guide us in this very particular moment of our time, the one Allah loves most, have called that particular person, my beloved Tali. Yes, someone also had a dream and the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also expressed such a love for him and says, my son, welcome. Now, how would we also not have a special love for such a person? Yes, our love for him is only because of our love for the Holy, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the love for the beloved Huzu. So when the beloved Huzu naturally loves him, then we, by default, naturally also start having our love flowing down to him. And that is why I am here. But yes, there's something even more important to it, and that is, Said Tali Ahmed Shahid is, uh, is from the family of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's also from the family of the Promised Messiah Alaihi Salam. He's from the uh, Pakistani origin in a, in, the sort of, in a way. He was born and bred in the United Kingdom. But something very unique has also happened. And that is why probably you will notice my dress and my boy who did the Tilawa's dress 
It's actually a dress of Ghana. It's a Ghanaian traditional dress of the people of the north where Sayyid Tali Ahmed actually passed away. Yes, he passed away in the land of Ghana, in Africa. Is it just a sheer coincidence? Couldn't it have been that he lived in, in the United Kingdom. Why didn't he just pass away here? He's been traveling around the world. He follows beloved Huzu. Why didn't he pass away anywhere else? Why? In the land of Africa. And yes, when I spoke to say, uh, Tali's dad, he said, yes, he was so excited when he was going to Africa. Yes, I know that myself as well, because at the Jaza Salana, just ended UK Jaza Salana, on the last day, he just came to me with such an excitement. I'm at South, I'm at South, you know what? I'm going to your country, I'm going to Africa, I'm going to Ghana. Yes, he was going to Ghana. An incident strangely happened at the very moment when he told me this. And that incident, I will share with you. It's an interesting incident because it was quite strange that we'll be discussing something of that nature at that very moment when he was just leaving three days after the Jasa Salana. But then after he had left, I didn't even still understand it. Up until the time, beloved Huzu delivered his kutuba. That was when it dawned upon me. Then that is when I also listened to the documentary, his documentary, and I just kind of understood it even much more. When he told me that he's going to Ghana, I said, oh, Tell us up, then you have to do me a favor. I need to send a laptop to um, uh, coordinator of Ghana, MTA Ghana coordinator of Ghana. Uh, so you need to take it along with you and give it to him. Tell us up, our beloved Tali said something very strange there. He goes very strange. You know, I'm at sub, I'm, I'm not taking the, the laptop. And I say, why? why? Why are you not taking it? In such a blatant way, he goes like, what about if I take it and I'm a Shahid? in the air, and then your laptop doesn't get to Ghana, then what would you say? You'll probably be blaming me that I took your laptop, and unfortunately, I didn't give the laptop to where it's supposed to go. Now that this kept ringing in my mind, why would he be discussing such a thing? I mean, we went on discussing even further that, yes, I mean, uh, uh, we went on. He then said, I said, listen, if you, if you are fortunate enough to be a Shahid, don't worry about the laptop. And I made a joke. Even if you go to Ghana and I meet you there, I'll come and take my laptop from there. But then he went on to say, Ahmed Saab, I don't you think it would be nice to have to be a Shahid when you're around the age of 70? I said, yes, it would be nice to be at the age of 70 when you're Shahid. But Shahid is Shahid. Whatever age that you, hits you, you'll be the best because that's your, your gateway to Jannah. But the question there would be, why would he be telling me this? And that later on, I came to realize that Yes, Allah had revealed such a chance to him. He knew it in a way that, yes, he was serving his cause in a way that he's dedicating himself and he was ready to be a shaheed and probably had seen some dreams to that effect, which later on we all discovered. Africa was where he landed. So, yes, my dear Pakistani brothers and our dear Kadian, Kadiani uh, brethren, brethren, those in the United Kingdom as well. Yes, you have an affiliation with Said Tali Shahid Sahib. But yes, we in Africa also have an affiliation with him now. You cannot claim ownership of him anymore. Why? Because he actually died on the lap of an African. But then the question would be, was it just a sheer coincidence? What is the message to us in Africa as well? What do we also owe to this legacy of this Tali Ahmed Shahid? It means we have a lot to do. And that is why I felt also as a Ghanaian, also as a friend of Tali, also someone that he had discussed something very intimate with me. Maybe if I had a little voice to it, probably my brethren in Africa would also rise up to that task. Our beloved Huzur, delivered a full kutuba on him. You know, the series of kutuba has been coming in this particular time, has always been what? The companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when the kutuba stopped, one came in with a message of what? Shaheed. And the passionate 
call of the beloved Huzu that he wished that we as Ahmadis and even the family of the promised Messiah live up to that expectation of what our brother has left behind. Now, that makes me feel very sad. Yes, I sat in Islamabad when our beloved Huzu delivered this speech. I was indeed very moved and I questioned myself, what do I have to do as an African? What do I have to do as a Ghanaian? Yes, his blood was poured in the land of Ghana. What do we have to do? Do we owe him anything? Yes, indeed, we owe him something. And that takes me back to the verse that was recited, that surely Allah has purchased of the believers their persons and their property and returned for the heavenly garden that they shall have. They fight in the cause of Allah and they slay and are slain an unfailing promise that he, Allah, has made incumbent on himself in the Torah and the gospel and indeed the Holy Quran. Now Allah gives all this and he ends by saying, that is the supreme triumph. Allah has purchased Satan's uh, 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 persons and his property and his everything and all he gives back to him is Jannah. And he goes on to describe in a very beautiful way, the characteristics of a believer, where we see our brother actually living up to that particular expectation. That is, they are ones who turn to Allah in repentance, who worship him, who praise him, who go about in the land serving him, who bow down to Allah, who prostrate themselves in prayer, who enjoy good and forbid evil, and who watch the limits set by Allah and give glad tidings to those who believe. Now, this is a very beautiful caption of the life of our brother, Sayyid Tali Ahmed. There is a hadith as well, which says, there are three qualities and whoever has them will taste the sweetness of faith. One is the one who loves Allah and his messenger more than anyone else. Did we not see from the beloved Huzu's kutubah? Did we not see from the documentary? Did we not see from all these messages that are flung everywhere? about our brother, that he lived up to this number one expectation, that he loved Allah, he loved the messenger, he loved Huzur, so much so that even on his dead, I mean, loves of his African brother, he kept on saying, tell Huzur I love him. Number two, it says, to love someone only for the sake of the almighty Allah. This is number two in the hadith. Did we not see our brother Tali exhibiting this quality? Number three is, he call or he hates returning to infidelity or sin after Allah, Allah has saved him from it. And he would accord or hate to be thrown into the fire of hell, just as he would hate to be what? To be doing sin. Did we not see our brother? This is taken from Buhari and Muslim. Did we not see our brother living up to that expectation? Indeed, he led, he led that particular lifestyle and we are all witnesses to it. We go on and we see the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, also in Mahfuzad, volume 1, page 182, beautifully, beautifully puts up, a, 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 a encapsulates the lifestyle of one who has dedicated his, his, himself to um, Allah and in the cause of Allah in a way of trying to also cite the hadith that we find in Buhari. The promised alayhi salam says, if a person's life is devoted to Allah, then God himself will protect him. From as I goes on to say, there is a hadith in Buhari that when a person develops a bond of love with Allah Almighty, Allah becomes his limbs. It is a state, it is a state in another, it is stated in another, another narration, my apologies. It is stated in another, another narration that this relationship of friendship grows to, stay, to, to such an extent that Allah becomes the hands, the feet, and in fact, all the limbs of such a person. He even becomes the tongue with which they speak. Now, this is what the Prophet Salam beautifully referring to the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam narrates and tells us. The Prophet goes on to say, in fact, in actual fact, when a person cleanses themselves for their inner passions and adheres to the will of the Almighty Allah, Abandon their own ego. None of their actions are unlawful. In fact, each and every one of their actions are in line 
with the will of the Almighty Allah. Even more so, God Almighty declares that their actions are to be those of Allah himself. And this again is taken from al Khuzad, volume 1, page 182. Now this actually beautifully des describes our brother, Said Tali Shahid. In the Friday sermon, our beloved Huzur, in a very passionate way, gives a description and narration of our brother. And in fact, if you look at it very closely, it is just like a narration of the, the Sahaba that the beloved Huzu has already been doing. It's so beautiful that we get to that point where you listen very closely and you reflect very deeply, you realize the lifestyle he led and the lifestyle of the, Shaha, the, 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 the Sahaba of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are in fact no difference here. They are just the same. That leads me to the Holy Quran. There's a beautiful verse in Surah to um, uh, uh, Baqarah where Hazrat Yusuf describes, his, uh, Allah described the, the time when Hazrat Yusuf was actually in bed, uh, in, in his uh, lying in his uh, uh, deathbed, and he's talking to his children, giving them all the guidance. But in the end of that particular verse, Allah says something very beautifully there. He goes, this is them, and this is what they've earned. Now it is left to us. What do we also do? Said Tali Ahmed Shahid has indeed earned himself that lofty station is now being considered among the Sahaba of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's considered among the Sahaba of the Promised Messiah alayhi salam. His lifestyle is now among those people that when we pray now, we say, Eidina surat al-mustaqim. Eidina surat al Guide us onto the right path, the path of those on whom Allah has bestowed his blessings. Is now fortunate enough, has been put in that particular category now. But this is the beauty that we Ahmadis have. That the Prophet ﷺ was given that particular mandate by Allah to create a community that will start living like the life of the Sahaba of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. In the Friday sermon, I would just, I know, I mean, we've all listened to that Friday sermon and I'll, I'll just always plead the indulgence that everyone keeps listening to it again, just to reflect just to go back and, and get, get, get yourself, reminding yourself and bringing yourself up to speed with what our beloved Huzu requires of us, as in this particular instance where we have this particular situation happening to us. This, this, I've, I've, list, I've read so many of them, I've listened to so many captions of the Friday sermon summary, but there's one that actually caught my attention, and that was one by West Croydon Legend at Tarbia Department, who actually listed. 48 characteristics or behavior or character that our beloved Huzu listed about Said Tali Ahmed Shahid. I'll probably read through some of them, but then obviously with 48, time will not permit us to go through all of them. But after that, what I'll do is I will then look at some of our beloved Huzu's message and what we as Ahmedis, what are we going to do now? And especially my brethren in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, wherever you are, where we were fortunate enough to have what gotten this blood poured on us, what do we also have to do? What, what level are we also prepared to move so that that legacy of Sayyid Tale Shahid Ahmed, what our beloved Guzu's anguish was, whether we are actually living up to that expectation? That is why this lecture is all here about. I'll read some of the um, uh, the caption from the Croydon, uh, West Croydon Legend of Tarabia Department. Number one, this says, his love for Khilafat was something that was displayed in every action. And that is what is love for Khilafat. And I believe our beloved Huzur in his captions in the Friday sermon beautifully, beautifully describes it. Yes, we list all this. But the question would be that now he has already achieved this, he's gone. He had a quality that Allah gave him. He used it and he demonstrated it through his love for Khilafat. What are you and I now doing? That is the whole essence of the, the reason why 
this this character, this beautiful uh, uh, characteristics of his lifestyle has been captured by our beloved Uzu and poured to us. Number two, they say it's unparalleled zeal and enthusiasm for Jamaat work. Yes, we know it. And his wife would always, the wife, I mean, beautifully also narrated it. He came home, he came home always late because he was doing Jamaat work. And he saw Jamaat work as the first thing on always his mind. To the point that even his, his, his sister makes it beautifully clear that when even they went on holiday, he, he was not happy until he was doing his Jamaat work, which means that Jamaat work was number one on his mind. To the point that our beloved Huzu says that this particular passion that he has, he has not even seen it in some of the learned scholars of the Jamaat. What are we doing? What can we do? All we need to do is to reflect, go before Allah, cry before Allah, and beg that Allah gives us such a station as well. Number three, it says dedication to completing work, to completing the Jamaat work and completing it, completing it on time. Due to time, I'm just quickly just going to run through it and I'll just move on to the next stage of the uh, discussion. It says well, it was conscious of the expense of the Jamaat property and protecting it. He was someone of simplicity. He kept option, optional fast. He observed Hajjud prayers. One hour, according to Uzo's instruction uh, to the Moravian. And I believe, I guess, I would have to say something small on this as well. And that is, when the Khalifa to Mercy is giving guidance, is giving instructions, even when it is whether it's pertaining to us or it's not pertaining to us, we, Ahmedis, the moment we hear it, we need to try as much as possible to put into our practice. And that is only when we will say we truly indeed love the Khalifa to Mercy. And in truly indeed, we show that we are doing everything to please Allah and to please this Khalifa to Mercy. He says during, and I, I know the, everyone knows this already, that during uh, uh, a mulaka, the virtual mulaka, when beloved Huzu was addressing the German delegation, and, and beautifully he told, he guided them that, yes, in summertime, he knows the night is very short, but at least they should try as much as possible to do about an hour tajud. This was passed to the what? The Moravian. What did say Talib do? He heard it. And the moment he heard it, he says, listen, if the Khalifa Tulmasi have said it, then I would also benefit from it. This is the passion, the zeal that we should have. He goes on to say his humility was unwavering. His loyalty, his commitment and devotion to the Jamaat was as an exemplary. He was indeed an exemplary role model for us. He understood the meaning of devotion, did justice to his devotion and pledge. Understood the spirit of life devotion, elevated it to the highest level. This is the lifestyle of the person we are talking about. He led that particular lifestyle and he raised it to the next level. But what is our beloved who's saying about that? He says, that is an example that he has set for us. And we now have to live up to that expectation. And if it is only when we live up to that expectation that we will say we are living up to that legacy of him. If not, naturally, what happens is when such an incident happened, when things like that happen, emotionally, people cry, people share tears and, and everything. But in the end, what happens is after a little while, we just forget about it, put it aside, and just start living whatever we want to live. But that is not what our beloved Uzu want from us. Uzu want us to live up to that expectation that we keep that legacy on. You can see from the anguish of beloved Uzu's voice and his heart that he just want us to live to that expectation so that indeed we can call ourselves for true Ahmedis. And beloved Uzu is saying he has lived to that particular standard. They goes on to say that he read five volume commentary of the Holy Quran with great detail, highlighted and annotated even to, to learn it more. What do we do? It means we also need to go back to it. I can go on and on. But the point here that I just want to move on to the next stage would be that, yes, he has done all this. He has earned himself that particular um, uh, level. He has earned himself that particular station in the sight of the Almighty Allah. 
Now we, as Ahmedis left behind, what are we actually doing? Yes, maybe we may not really truly reflect deeply upon it. But me as a Ghanaian, me as an African, and again, I want to go back to my brothers in Africa. The question would be, what are we going to do to hold on to that legacy? What are you going to do? What is What pledge are you going to do from today? Are you going to prioritize the words of the Khalifa to Messi over everything that else that you do, over your own work, over your own friends, your, your property, your everything, every worldly endeavors? Would you say, let's see, there's, there's another very important point that uh, um, Huzu also explained about him and his, and his life with regards to MTA. He did something very, very unique there. Whatever he did was a case of trying to bring the love of the Khalifa to Messi to the people and then the love of the uh, people to the Khalifa to Messi. And that was the job that he was doing. Now, my brethren in Ghana, MTA, my brethren in all the MTA stations in Africa, especially, you are so fortunate enough to have behold such a boy, such a beloved, a person whom the Khalifa to Messi, my beloved Tali, a person whom when he was on his sick bed crying before, you, those people, uh, uh, I mean, our brother uh, Omar Farouk, on your laps, he continuously said, tell Huzu, I love him. Tell my family, I love, I love him. What are we doing in Africa, MTA? What does he actually mean to me as a Ghanaian? And what does he actually mean to us with MTA giving to us in Africa, Ghana? What is the essence of our beloved Huzu giving us MTA in Africa? Are we now going to make a pledge that this is the channel that we are going to watch more than every channel that we do, we watch in Africa? Are we going to hold MTA, the dearest of all channels that we watch? Are we going to put Huzu on our screen all the time? Or we are now going to be still sinking to our local uh, movies and uh, Nollywood or Ghana movies or whatever movies that you want to call them? Are we going to be prioritizing our sports movies over MTA? Again, this is my passionate call to my brethren in Africa. This is only when we can live up to that legacy of Sayyid Charlie Ahmed. I will digress a bit about Sayyid Charlie Ahmed's father's message that he wanted me to convey to the Africans. And I believe uh, my brother also said there's one photo that he wanted to show that he saw Sayyid Charlie Ahmed with a boy. And the father describes how that photo came about and then the essence of that particular photo and what he as a father saw in his son at that very moment when you saw that particular photo. That, that photo that you see, and most of you would have seen that say Tali Ahmed is carrying this African boy. And he says that the description, the caption of that particular photo is that that boy's mother actually passed away in an accident. And he made every effort to save the son. And in that effort, she passed away and the son survived. Now, say Tali Ahmed saw this boy and he felt that he had something to do with that boy. It was like his blood. He felt it and he says, I know my son. And I know when I saw that photo and I saw what it was in his eyes and his face, I saw that special love for him. His father, Hashim Sahib, then goes on to say, I want to be a little bit apologetic. I want to be apologetic to the Africans because at times we, he goes on to say, we Pakistanis, and he says, I'm okay, even if you tell the, the world, tell the Pakistanis, tell the Africans that if you see, if you come to the United Kingdom, you go anywhere and you see them actually uh, uh, making the faith looks like it belongs to them, do not actually give up because the faith equally belongs to you as it belongs to them. The promise that came for all of us this is Sayyid Ali, uh, Say, uh, Shahid's father saying that Africans should not, when, when you go to your meetings and he says, this is something that Tali actually felt so much pain about when he goes to meetings and he see that they are speaking, for instance, Urdu, and there are some Africans there and they don't feel as part of it. He said Tali always felt that pain and he used to discuss that with his father. 
that he doesn't understand why we do those to the Africans. And honestly, it will not be Africans alone. It will be any, any other person who will not be able to understand the Urdu language. He goes on to say, our beloved Huzu has even given what a guidance to that effect. I say this passionately because yes, in Parma, some of the African brothers find it very difficult to go to the mosque. And they will tell you, when we go, it is only Urdu, we don't understand anything, so why don't we stay home? Yes, it is not an excuse for an African to say that. But despite all this, Sayyid Tali Shahid's dad says that this was his passion. This is what he wanted to see happening among the, uh, the Pakistanis. And as such, when we see, when you Africans see the Pakistanis doing this, he says, do not see it as what a representation of the promised Messiah. Do not see it as a representation, representation of the true faith of Islam Ahmadiyyat. Islam Ahmadiyyat is inclusive for all. So he says, the message to his, Africa, his, his Pakistani brothers would be, please stop this behavior because Sayyid Tali Ahmed, whom you are hailing now, never liked that behavior. Besides, to the Africans as well, he said he is very apologetic. However, that should never ever stop you from going forward and marching forward to serve Islam Ahmadiyyat or going to the mosque to do the duty that you are bound to do for the sake of Islam Ahmadiyyat and, and Allah that we belong to. So this is an advice from Sayyid Tali Shahid's dad that I felt I should also bring it to the, to the attention of everyone that this is one of his legacy, that he, he was inclusive he wanted the Africans to be with the, with the Pakistanis as one. So wherever he saw there was any sort of any tiny divisions, he felt the pain in his heart. Now I'll touch on another thing, which uh, um, again, our brother actually captured in his, uh, in his uh, uh, poem, to our, um, which he wrote and then uh, gave to a friend to hide. And he said, keep this, do not show it to anyone. I actually see a lot of wisdom in it because this is a situation where he loved the Khalifa to Messi so much so that he wanted to do everything for the sake of the Khalifa to Messi because he wanted to please Allah. Our African brothers, again, I say today, I'm coming from the African background and I, want, I just want to be talking to you more than anyone else. Time and time again, I hear this message over, over and over and over again. Oh, you people are very close to Huzur, and as such, you show your love, and then you are so fortunate, and you go on, and they will give you, and then, oh yeah, you are so fortunate you live in the United Kingdom. Yes, there is no doubt there is something good about it. And yes, it is true. When you are in the company of such a pious person, you benefit from it. It is true. Let's look at the poem of our brother, our beloved brother, Tali, and let's go a little bit deeper. You will notice here that he actually did everything that he wanted to do, pleasing the Khalifa to Messi, but at the same time doing it as if it was a bit of a distance, to the point that he finished the poem by saying, I love the, the beloved Huzur, but the Huzur will not, never know it. At that point, very beautifully in the Kutuba, Huzur responds, my beloved Tali, I knew it before even your poem. Which means that wherever you are, wherever you are as an Ahmadi, if you truly want to love the Khalifa to Messi, all you want to do is do it just like Tali did. Hide yourself somewhere, whether in a village in Africa, whether wherever, whether you cannot, whether even you get empty or you don't get empty to see even the, the beloved Guzu. Hide yourself away, express that love to him by serving the community, by obeying every word that you hear from the beloved Guzu. And hide it. And Allah indeed would convey it to the Khalifa to Messi, and the Khalifa to Messi would know it. That reminds me of another brother's message which he shared with me, <laughs> I will share with you as well. And that is, he says, he was only fortunate to have seen Khalifa to Masih Rabi when he was young, he was a child in Africa. That was the only time he spotted, uh, as a result, Tahir Ahmed 
Khalifatul Masih Rabi Rabi Rahmahullah. But he never ever saw him when he grew up, other than probably just seeing him on MTA. But he loved Huzu very dearly. Only Allah knew his heart and how much he loved Huzu. So much so that he wanted to do everything the Khalifatul Masih, Khalifatul Masih Rabi would tell, tell the Jama'at to do. He will pray for him. He will write letters to him. At times he doesn't even get any response. But all he did was he loved the Huzur and he wanted to show that special love for the Khalifatul Masih. But he says he knew the Khalifatul Masih also loved him. That is a beauty. And I ask, how did you know that? He says, because Allah was so fortunate that in my dreams, every time I saw Khalifatul Masih Rabi, he always wanted to hug me and he told me I love you. This is a lesson for our brothers who stay far away. So all I'm saying is, this is one of the legacy of Sayyid Ali. Yes, he did it, hiding it away. Yes, he was fortunate. He was a family of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was fortunate. He was a family of the Promised Messiah Alaihi Wasallam. But what did he do? He did it, hiding it away. And he said he knew his love for the Khalifa to Messiah, the Khalifa to Messiah would never know it. But Allah planted the love of the of Sayyid Tali Shahid in the heart of the Khalifa to Messiah. The Khalifa to Messiah said, I knew it before, even because I could see it whenever you held the camera. I could see it whenever I saw you. Yes, we may not probably be seeing the Khalifa to Messiah directly, but the message of our brother from Africa would be a lesson for us. That if we indeed, indeed show our special love for him and start obeying him in every, every uh, uh, guidance that he gives us, then Allah will plant his, our love in his heart so much so that in our dreams, he will show himself to us, Allah will bring him to us and let him tell us that he loves us. There's another, another thing that I, I thought maybe I should share, and that is uh, the, the, the message that some of us would also say that, yes, indeed, he did whatever he wanted to do because he was a family of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was a family of the Promised Messiah Alaihi Wasallam. So that becomes a sort of an excuse that we cannot try and reach that level that he reached because we are not from the family of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Neither are we from the family of the promised Messiah. Is that true? The answer is a very big no. And for those of us who have this particular notion, we should take that notion from our heart. If we really want to keep up to that legacy, then we need to understand that this actually being a family of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, being a family of the promised Messiah Alaihi Wasallam doesn't give you that station. Beloved Huzu even explained it in his kutubah. So much so that we know the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent his salam to two people whom he knew he was never going to meet. Elias Skarini from Yemen had that particular message that send my love, send my salam to him. The other person was the promised Messiah Alaihi Wasallam. Now, when the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam expressed such a love for people, who did not come to him, who never met him. And in fact, they were never from his lineage. They promised Messiah alayhi salam, the person who loved the Holy Prophet most, the ardent devotee of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was never from the family of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, the promised Messiah alayhi salam says that some of the uh, Sayyid, the family members of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do, set, do some actions that actually bring a disgrace to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a disgrace to, to Islam. He goes on to say that even some of them have actually joined other religious group and they attack the personality of the beloved master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So indeed, when you're a family member of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it doesn't give you that title. You have to work for it. And beloved Huzu says he wants to see us, even including the promised Messiah's family, that this particular brother, our beloved brother, who has been martyred, who has become a shaheed, 
his legacy should even move the members of the family of the Prophet Muhammad so that they start moving to do things that would only please Allah and no one else. This is something that really touches me a lot. And I felt I should share with you. I'll just mention one other uh, narration from one of the kutubas of the beloved Uzu in few, um, and again, apologies, I, I wasn't able to get that uh, uh, reference. After a Friday, um, a few years ago, after one, after um, Ramadan, our beloved Uzu, in the next Friday, the Friday after Ramadan, gave a very beautiful guidance to the Jamaat. And he says, yes, in the month of Ramadan is the time that Allah opens the gate. It's the time that Allah closes the gate to, uh, to hell and then opens the gate to Jannah so that everyone can get a chance to, to reform themselves and, and move up the ladder and get closer to Allah. Yes, everyone has to fight for Laylatul Qadr. But the Prophet Salam said, yes, it's not everyone who will get the Laylatul Qadr in the month of Ramadan. So beloved Huzu then advised that yes, some of us, some of us, unfortunately, would not have been able to what, to move closer to Allah in the month of Ramadan. But that does not give us a chance to give up. We should still continue to persevere we should still continue to stand up to fight to get closer to Allah, even at the, after the month of Ramadan. And Allah, out of His own mercy, the mercy of Allah has not, has not doesn't have a limit. So we just need to just go all out and give us all our best. And inshallah, Allah will give us the what that reformation that we need, even if we didn't we couldn't achieve it in the month of Ramadan. I say this because it's almost a month now when our beloved Huzu delivered this important kutuba even as that desire that he wished that the Ahmadis would move now closer to Allah. Ahmadis will now see Sayyid Talib Ahmed Shaheed as an example to change our life. Even the family of the Prophet members should see this chance as a chance to change our life. It's almost a month now. Yes, probably we have not done anything. Maybe we have not done it, but the message of Khalifa Tul Mercy in that uh, Friday Kutuba after Ramadan is what I just want to remind us all here. That yes, if you have not done it already, it is never too late. Make the pledge today. Make the pledge with your family. Make the pledge with your, with your friends and stand up to that tax and tell yourself that today, I am now going to make that pledge. I am going to listen to that Friday sermon and listen to that anguish of, of, of the voice of beloved Huzu, the passion of beloved Huzu, that we will all reform and live up to that expectation and make this blood which, which was poured in the, in, the, in the land of Africa something that will reform all of us. Yes, list it. Pick up a, a pen and a paper. Make what a list. Start listing. Number one, number two, number three, number four. He has achieved all this. Now, I am going to start from today to achieve them. Put them maybe, just write them, put them probably in your room. If it's your office, put them on the office wall. Put them wherever you want to put it. Put it on your phone. Make it your wallpaper. Whenever it pops up, it reminds you that I need to live up to that expectation. And let's start it today if we have not done it. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his um, uh, uh, last... Uh, 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 in his uh, farewell sermon, so that the message that he has given to the people, the Muslim who are in his presence, they should carry it to the corners of the earth. They should carry it to air wherever they go. Maybe those who are not present will benefit from, those, from the message than even those who are present. That is what we need to do now. We need to take this message and spread it. That beloved Huzu said, we need to live up to that expectation. Yes, even if you cannot listen to the Friday someone for whatever reason, we all know our 10 conditions of the bayan. And we know when you read all the, the lines of the way Sayyid Talib Shahid Ahmed led his life, his legacy was that he lived up to that expectation of what? The 10 conditions of the bayan. 
Even if you cannot do anything at all, print that 10 conditions of the buyout, put it in your wall, in your room, and every morning read it. This is how we can live up to that expectation. Read it and just, just get to yourself and say, am I actually achieving it? Am, do I really consider myself a true Ahmedi? Am I really a, a member of the community of the promised Messiah? Spiritual lineage is even stronger than physical lineage. And our beloved Huzur is what our spiritual father. He binds all of us together. Now, when we have that strong bond with him, that would only be when we have, when we pick our phone and we turn it on, for instance, our wallpaper or whatever you call, uh, call it, or in our, in our homes or next to my bed, I put what uh, the 10 conditions of buyer, and I'm reading it daily to reflect, to see whether indeed I am living up to that expectation. Whether we are legend, whether we are Kudam, whether we are at far, we are all bound to be living up to that 10 conditions of Ibaya. Say Tali Ahmed, yes, with his camera, all he did with the with a, with a, with a knowledge that Allah gave him in journalism, he did it with what? The passion to serve mankind, to serve the Khalifa to Messiah, and to serve this divine Jamaat. You and I are now left behind. What are we going to do, especially my brothers in Africa? Are we now going to live up to that expectation? Are we going to call ourselves true Ahmedis wherever we are? We are, Ahmedis are so fortunate to be the light of the world. So wherever corner that you find yourself, you need to brighten up that place. So much so that everyone in that neighborhood, everyone at the workplace, everyone in the community, in the village, in the towns, wherever, would point a finger at you and say, that person looks quite different. That is the only point when we say we are living up to the legacy of Sayyid Tali Ahmed Shahid. So bring in my message to the end. And I'll just apologize again if I've not been able to do justice to it. But bring it to the end. I will just want to quote another st statement from the message of the Promised Messiah, salam, where the promise alayhi salam beautifully gives a message and this i want to say to the wife of our beloved brother who has passed away our widow to the children the mother yes we know of the wife's situation his father was a shaheed and i believe when your father disappears like that and you marry your husband becomes your father he becomes your friend. He becomes your, 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 it becomes your everything, sort of. And Allah has taken him away. Yes, it's going to be very sad. And we all, we cannot even imagine the sort of pain that our beloved sister will be going through. But then we also have the mother who have also lost such a dear son, the father, the brethren. And in fact, all of us, Amidis, our beloved Huzur, But the promise uh, beautifully put a message in what um, Malfuzat, volume one, page 183, where the promise uh, says, it says, the effect of a righteous man, however, is felt, it says, the effect of a righteous man, however, is felt by even his progeny and they to benefit from him. So the effect of our brother who is a righteous man, his benefit would indeed be going to the progeny, the wife and the children and the family that is left behind. He's already said in love you. You all benefit from that particular love because all the Ahmedis around the world will be praying for you. They will all be wishing you well. The promise that goes on to say, is, it says, in fact, such a person does not die at all. When physical deaths overtake him, he is granted a new life by Allah. He goes on to say, Hazrat Dawood, on whom be peace, states, I was a child and have now grown up. I have never seen a godly man in, in a demeaned state. Nor have I seen the children of such pious people begging for scraps. That is to say, Allah Almighty even takes it upon himself to support the children of the God-fearing persons. 
So indeed, the wife, the children, and the family, Allah indeed will take care of you and will support you and you're all in our prayers. But we, Ahmadis, whether executives, whether the floor members, yes, those of us who work at times, we do it purely to just uh, please uh, uh, our other leaders. But the Sayyid Tali Ahmed never did it this way. He did it purely to please Allah. And with that, the Prophet Isaiah says, indeed, Allah only want people with taqwa to serve this Jamaat. So may Allah enable us to follow the legacy of our brother, and especially my brother in Africa, let us all wake up and make this pledge that we will live up to that expectation and let this legacy of our beloved brother continue to be with us till our end as well. Amen. Jazakumullah. Um, Jazakallah, um, MSF, uh, for um, such an inspirational lecture. Um, there's no doubt that there are moments during the lecture, the emotions ran high. Our um, viewers were sending messages, um, thanking you and allowing you to reflect on the uh, life, uh, some aspect of the life of our um, late um, brother. Sayyid Tali Shaheed Sahib. Um, your references to the Holy Quran and Hadith and Promised Messiah rightly emphasizes the importance of the love of Khilafat and the humbleness of the Sayyid Tali Shaheed, um, who left a legacy for us to learn from and uh, for such and, and made us to reflect and stay steadfast to to our progress for our spiritual world. May Allah give us all the guidance and the courage to serve and the in Islam, uh, I mean, uh, it's such a an emotional uh, lecture, and I think it just and just give us time to ask any questions. And I I just feel that um, it won't justify. <laughs> the the viewers have praise about the lecture, so we feel that um, it, it's it's for this occasion. If if you are okay with that, so we won't ask any question. But I just want to let our viewers know that um, our lectures are continuing for next week uh, on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, 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 Monday is the Urdu lecture and uh, on Tuesday is the English lecture. Um, so please keep on watching and if you have any comments uh, or you'd like to say a, a specific lecture on any topic, so please email us uh, to the Talim website. Um, can I request um, MSF to uh, lead us in the silence prayer to uh, close this session, if you may, please. Jazakumullah. I would not be doing just if I do not finish off the Dari Tari. So, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin wa ma salaita ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin wa ma barakta ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima Amen. Amen. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.